consequential for life. In inconsequential. Oh, inconsequential. Okay. In modern views, philosophy are that it is inconsequential to life and psychology. Psychology. The need for words as the in unfoldment of the logos, which is the necessity for philosophy at for the of the self. Did you want those heated up here? Hmm? I can heat those up if you want. No, okay. Regina, do you mind if I move the flowers there? Oh, okay. Sure. Put them yeah, it looks like he has a daffodil beard or something. Yeah, exactly. They're so pretty though. Is there any place I we know. can still enjoy them? Um, uh, can put them see, down I'm here, thinking maybe. about it. Here. What's the book? Holographic Universe. Oh, I brought this. Pierre, uh, I have not cracked the cover yet, so I can't tell you. Okay. But it came, it looks so interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. I agree. So I thought if you wanted to buy, I've, I've been waiting to read it and then discuss with you, but it's just sitting on my shelf, so I thought I would pass it on to you. Done. And you can take it, and maybe it's a waste of time, or maybe no, it's no, good. No. But it's up my alley. That's, I, that's the nature of dreams. Julia, hi. Here's your bed, Thank you. You're welcome. What do you do with all of it? All of what? Our puzzles. Did you get a dream? Yeah, oh, yeah, I did have a dream, but I, I didn't write it down. Oh. It's a series of dreams I'm having lately about yeah. layers. That's layers right. Layers upon layers upon yeah. layers. Yes. <sighs> and what see and what's the significance of layers? Because you're one way of understanding your dream last night is that they are no of no consequence. Right. Because layers presuppose separations, distinctions. True. Real clear. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Functional distinctions. Like sandwiches. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. That was really... Hmm? That was really amazing because, for me, because when I read your dream, mm -hmm. I, went, I went in the totally other... I, I was totally uh, tricked. And Pierre just, and he had to stay with it, and you kept answering the same way. But when I read the dream, I went, oh, this is easy. She's, she's seeing people who have different aspects of beauty, and she's seeing that they're all the same thing, and she's seeing well, and she's not wasting her time with busy work on jobs anymore. And, oh, this is easy. We'll be done in three minutes. <laughs> but Pierre went in um, and pulled out the threads of it so much more precisely, spent so much more time on it, and could see that it actually went in exactly the opposite direction. And when you finally matched it with the previous evening's yeah. uh, stuff, it confirmed that that's indeed the way that it went, was going. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and actually today I thought of another way it could have gone in terms of the previous evening, too. So it's... How so? Well, um, just... I don't want to go into details now, but just another angle. Cool. Yeah. They're on a good trail. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you have a couple I, I, or something? Kind of. Uh, when I saw the dream, I got caught up in the... Take whatever you like. This is a uh, profound dream where she's seeing the oneness in different levels. But the thing that caught me was not only did she make distinctions... And it was her last statement at the beginning yeah. of the first, yeah. which is, and whatever the stuff is. And yeah. at the bottom, she said I, it was good, it was a busy state, and I was organized and stuff. And it ended up in the same language. And I went, wait a minute, she just wiped out twice the good distinction she was making. And so when you pulled out fun and games, I, I I hadn't seen that part, but I said, this is not what it appears, so I'll be interested in knowing what Pierre sees in it. If it wasn't for the last sentence, 
it could be very puzzling. And whether or not it was literal or not. Yeah, that's true. She changed it. That was important, wasn't it? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I still have my, I still hold the position I had, but. Of course, so I'm not. Yeah. The point we're raising is yeah. that the last sentence could not be taken literally. Yeah. Well, it was ambiguous. No, it isn't. No. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but we had to understand it. Yes, in it terms is. Of her. You, no. you don't know what it was referring to, and no, because no. it doesn't enough. say. No, no. What it refers to. Uh, is another issue. The issue is whether or not that's self-contained and whether or not that's a judgment. And of course a dreamer always has the right to say, excuse me, you know, uh, I need to be more accurate now that I reflect upon it and therefore you cannot take it literally, but in terms of the literal import of a statement of a dream, it, it is in itself complete. Yeah, it was. which leaves you puzzled, whether it's in that there is a literal statement and, at the, and when it was changed, it makes you, okay, you pull back and leaves you puzzled. What do you make of this? Now, Jeff happens to be the person that was caught into this. Really? Mm. So since he's not here, we can talk about him. Oh, here he is. Are we going to continue our conversation from last night? Yeah. Now, Barbara said that it's not fair unless you can get Jeff to recall part of that discussion, at least the high points of it, otherwise she's going to be left out and she's going to feel upset. So true. Her. So, so true. Well, we don't want <laughs> any of us to feel left out, especially if there are good ideas at play. <clears throat> so what's the, is this a question, or is this? A Are we talking about the conversation outside the front door? That so, continued for the whole evening. Yes. Well, if you'll help me along a little bit, um, it started. Um, let's see. <clears throat> ah, my original question, but we'll move off of it fairly quickly, was that uh, I remembered that I love two quotes of Pierre's, and I was trying to understand the relationship between them. The two quotes were, um, uh, the appearance of uh, all, I'm sorry, all vice is owed to the appearance of virtue. Right. And the second quote was, which we just got at the seminar again, right? The second quote was, all problems are owed to a war on the mind. And I was trying to put the two of those together because at first cut, it looks like an attribution to all problems or all vice is being given to two different things. So I wanted to understand their relationship. But that... Uh, Pierre asked us a few questions, and that got us into uh, the question of um, how is it that um, Usia, the, 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 how is it that, um, how is it possible that even asking these kinds of questions, um, what, no, what does what does it say about the universe we live in that we can even ask these kinds of questions? Mm -hmm. So then we moved forward, and we all struggled with it for quite a while, except Pierre. <laughs> Kevin jumped in and suggested that it leads, because it leads to, uh, because the fact that Usia exists indicates uh, the existence of providence, mm -hmm. but both Pierre and I took him to task in that uh, there were several links missing 
getting from Lucia to Providence, and we wanted to see those. Um, and then help me out from that point forward, Pierre. How did we decide that Providence, well, and then we went to Logos. Yeah, we said that's a very interesting answer, but it's so general mm. that it isn't useful because we have to know what is so providential about it that, that it can bring about changes like this. Thank you. So, even though we appreciated the answer, providence as it were, it didn't help us understand how in what particular way does it function so that it's providential. That is Usia. And then we got to? Logos. Usia. For a while, someone kept or introducing the idea of Usia and Usia and Usia. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, both good and bad men exhibit Uchia and whatever they're doing. Hmm. Now they're turning upon themselves and reflect, so that's not, that's hmm. not sufficient. You need something beyond Uchia. Yes, that's right. So then, that's what got us to Logos. Mm -hmm. um, but even with Logos, we had an additional problem I think we tackled for a while, where does Logos come from? True. And you asked us, um, well, we struggled with it for a little while, but then you made the point that uh, there is a, a one positive statement made about the first hypothesis, although all the rest are negatives. I'm probably missing a step or two That's here. Okay. Um, and again, we didn't, uh, we didn't quite remember, so Pierre was gracious and reminded us that um, uh, what you can say positively is that, oh, but you put it so much more specifically, in order to make the statements, uh, negative statements about the first hypothesis requires a logos. Right. And that is a positive mm. statement. And we've covered that in Parmenides. Yeah. And that's one of the claims made in the first hypothesis. Mm. That itself is made. Yeah, the logos. But then, Yeah, yeah, so I'm a little fuzzy here. Ah, what was our next? We said, hey, wait a minute, the Logos functions when people are exploring problems. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I mean, the whole midwifery is a study of the Logos. If you mean by the Logos, a general plan of approach that it can be used in all cases, though there might be various adaptations to the individual needs, nonetheless it follows a strict pattern of questions and explorations, therefore it's a logos, or it's a dialectic, we called it, and a dialectic is a way of expressing the logos. Right, so, uh, we said, wait a minute, maybe it's important to discover uh, like, have, uh, is it possible that you're familiar with this idea? Uh, the logos or the dialectic? Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And have you also um, participated in talks where yes. uh, a state of mind emerges when you see something important in, in a problem? Well, I'm sure that's true. Whether I can recall one right now might be a different issue. Uh, let's see. Okay, yes. Oh, oh. But would you agree, though, that all problems, as mentioned before, have their origin and appearance of virtue? Hmm. We went further and said that appearance of virtue really camouflages the fact that what is really going on is an unjust act. Hmm and we suffer the consequences of that injustice. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to keep exploring to try to get rid of this thing. Mm -hmm. That is what, the suffering that follows, which we never suspected might follow from some cause. And by using a dialectic, we search for the cause. Mm -hmm. Say, is it not possible that you can recall times when you yourself have been benefited by an insight into a particular problem? Yes. Ah, what name do you call that state of mind when you're seeing? 
<laughs> right. Because it got you out of the state, did it not, of the suffering of an injustice? Yes. I'd be tempted hmm, to call it a state of self, because at that moment there aren't, there don't appear to be any images mm -hmm. of false images. Mm -hmm. But self may need a higher, more honorific placement. But in any case, it's a very clear state. Sure. Sure. By the way, is it worthwhile putting a name on that state? Because after oh, I all, think so. I mean, it's a state of like being able to see through what previously you lived out. Oh, but to put so let's see, what state could you put it on? A lot of people would say it's like piercing a veil. That's what? Like piercing a veil. But that's a metaphoric that's use. Good. Or, that's good. Uh, what yeah, was the and I like metaphors at this level? point. So, yeah. um, but um, if someone were to ask you, uh, what name would you put on that state that brought you to the amazing transformation that pulled you out of suffering into freedom of suffering and land in a most interesting state? In other words, it isn't just a negative. It isn't that you just got rid of something, but you found yourself in a state of mind that you, in, that you, you can benefit by and enjoy and enjoy being there. Is that right? Fair enough. I have a Shouldn't we get a name for that? Since it's not merely negative. True, it's not. I, I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Uh -huh. How about uh, uh, an experience of the Logos? Well, there are many. Which one were you thinking of? Well, no, I was thinking of naming it that. Naming that state of mind go ahead. an experience of the longer. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm tempted. Funny. No, no, no. What kind of experience Birds. of the logos would you put that name on? <laughs> what kind? Well, because there are many they have their own right? there are many variations of the appearance of the logos. Is there any particular name you'd say, well, it fits this one rather than that one? Well, I don't, um, first of all, have some idea of multiple different experiences of the Logos. Pardon me, didn't that's, you that's suggest it in your answer? No, I suggested calling it an experience of the Logos. An experience of the Logos. And suggests what? It's just a... A, a experience is a particular experience of okay. Logos, isn't that what it means? Well, uh, the A is just for the, it's a particular state English of mind. English grammar of it all. It's, it's a sorry. particular state of mind. I, I'm not saying thank that Thank you, thank that you, I, I like that. It's a particular state of mind. What particular state of mind is it? Experience of the Logos. Yes, but that admits of a plurality, does it not? Well, because uh, the path of Logos has a Logos. How about the hypoxis of usia? Since an usia is a recursive movement, and at some point it, it uh, is an encounter with mind, we could call that moment its hypoxis because it leads to growth. Yeah, what name did you put upon that? State? I called it the hypoxis. No, no, no. You put a name on that state you just I did. described. Well. <laughs> You made a description. I not it. only put one. This no. is my second shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. See, it's a description a name. It would depend on the description. Right. To right. me. Is describing the function of something a name? Describing the function of something a name. <laughs> I think in some ways it's better than a name. Then what's the name? Depends on, I maybe another way of dealing with it might say it's enlightenment. Hmm? Enlightenment. Would you agree there are many stages of enlightenment? Would you agree it's a name that I put on it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Are there many stages? Yes. Oh, well then which one? And what name would we call hmm. the one that At it is? At the moment when you're cutting through, what name would I... Which one of the stages and what was the second part? Well, would you agree if you have reference to the Oxarding picture, which is an example of descriptions of different states of enlightenment, which one would you pick on that would best qualify as an answer for this riddle that we have in front of us? Well, experientially, it's like the tenth. Because it's, there's a freedom, there's uh, a certain joy. There's this un, it seems like it's unhampered scene, unhindered, unblocked, infinite but scene. But isn't the fifth and the sixth equally freedom? Especially the fifth, riding the ox. No, but you got you in the ox. Playing still. the flute. And you got you in the ox and the flute. So I wouldn't think so. But unfortunately, I'm not that familiar with the ox herding pictures uh, okay, of don't philosophical midwifery. Yeah, you haven't do any study of them over there when you were sitting on your butt. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Hmm. hmm. I was hoping. So was I. We need Brad. But I'm just offhand. I mean, I'm I'm thinking. Just painting. I, I never thought of that flute as being much of a burden. <laughs> but you're saying it is a really distinction. You down a, a distinction. Mm -hmm. I didn't call it a burden. But it takes away from your freedom. I said that in that state there were distinctions that don't exist in the tenth. And therefore, I oh, was saying. Ten. Oh, I thought you were saying ten. Okay, ten. Ten. Oxarding picture. Oh. Well. Hmm. Because there are there are different stages of freedom. Oh, absolutely. And uh, right, so. Yeah, freedom. But I'll, remember, I also mm. said there was kind of an infinite scene. There's no. And I don't know that that could be said about the dude on the back of the ox with the flute. Well, okay. But I'm not an ox, I'm not an ox yeah, herding okay. sure okay. expert. Like last night, it was seeing that the con, that you had been conned. That, it seemed like that's what opened it up for me. And that's really the question, whether it's the transition. Because sometimes the way Pierre put the question, it was like, what's the transition to the seeing state, the insight state? Right. And if that's the case, then I would agree with you. Right. When you see that you're buying something that is... You know, that totally opens it up and suddenly, and then when David pointed out about the the options that you were facing, mm -hmm. you, you felt like you were being free and yet you were still in her sandbox. Um, so it's like solving a riddle or something. Yeah. And it, it's just a moment of insight where suddenly all the pieces now make sense and they fit so then the description is what is that state so yeah so it's i like the idea like you said of seeing unlimited unification mm. unification hmm. everything coming together What if we describe that state of mind in terms of a different tradition, Buddhism, Elder. and see its and see its parallels in the Platonic as a possible so answer to trip. our puzzle? I'm sorry, Pierre, I missed your question. 
Or is it the one you're putting on the board? Yeah. What if we describe the state of mind in terms of a different tradition, Buddhism, for its possible parallels with the Platonic? Hmm. Right? For or as a possible answer to our puzzle. But you see, this has to this has to link back to the original statement of the nature of a a problem, right? Um, The appearance of virtue is the cause of all... Vice. Vice. Right. Now, see, uh, it's a very interesting statement, but you see, there are different kinds of virtues, mm -hmm. and therefore it's too general. What about if we go with the other? That problems are, what was the word, caused by the war on mind? No, yeah, okay. Because same. then you could same, call same, that same, state same, same pure thing. mind. Yeah, same thing, same thing, same thing. Um, um, see, that's a metaphor, right? The war on mind? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, we can't use that as the name of something if it's a metaphor. You have to know what the, what is the metaphor of. Actually, I was taking it, using it, using war, uh, using mind as a name for that state you were looking for. But again, are there not different states of mind if we want to use the same parallel with the oxiding pictures of which particular state of mind would be most appropriate to use as a name for that kind of state? So, well, different states of mind or different degrees of pure so of an look, entry so into you. pure mind. I'm not say something. Cold. This is the guy that's gotten mm -hmm. involved with Esselin Talbot. I think that's what that is. Thinking of somebody else? I was thinking it was Tarbell, the oh, realtor. Okay. It's Talbot. Have you ever heard of this guy, Talbot? Well, I think he's up at Esselin. This, this one? I think so. Part of the board now. Yeah, what's 
that last word, openness? Okay, openness. that's what we're in. Right? Essentially, that's it. Agree? Lay himself for the suffering you endure. And mud, why free it? I see it, I'm free of it. Openness. Right? Yes. For example, the justice. So, a possible answer, a way of possibly going for an answer, is to look at people who make studies of states of mind. Well, but, uh, Buddhism does. Now, wait a second. What? It seems like there's a step there you didn't put down. Like, not only is there the injustice, but you got conned. You bought it. Yes. That, yes. Is that a separate no, no. step? No, that's... Or is that... No, no. That's taking the blame. That taking the blame is is being conned, right? No. You've been conned to take on the blame. Blame self for the suffering you endure. You blame the self for the suffering you endure, yes. right? That's the con. Yeah. And they let that go down. Yeah. And, um, so you walk around living your life like you're a con, an ex I'm an ex con. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, walk around living your life as a con, been con. And then you have midwife. Lady. She likes that insight. <laughs> what? Yeah, I loved it when she, when Jeff saw that. That was so interesting. That just you mean the con of my negotiating uh, one instead of two menial tasks? Right. And thinking I'm successful when really I'm still in the box. Yeah. That was actually David Coe's insight. That was really That nice. was good, yeah. Yeah. But she's letting... But didn't I mean, YouTube. yeah, I mean, yours is just one example. I mean, I've... That, that's so powerful, the con part. Where they... Ain't it, though. Like, that's when they got you. That's when you take it. Now, do the same thing, since you're doing it so expertly on the moment of yeah. the transmission of the pathologos. Yeah. What name do you give when a person gets out of it? Right? That's what we're into. Sorry. Well, they have to go yes. through a series of steps. That's what we're in, into. Of the logo. With the logos, they have to go through a reasoning agree. process. Yeah. Yeah. And By the way, <coughs> if you go through those steps, what state of mind do you get into? I happen to know the answer. Hey. <laughs> okay, well, this is the question. What is it? Is he it says he knows the answer because he no, went... just for... But you're leaving but I'm not going to say it. No. The question so, okay. you get into, or I mean, you have to be in that state to follow the logos through. Right. Then, and what then kind of, you get to another state of, what I see the, it now. Yeah, yeah, what do you call it? <laughs> that state? Thank right, you. What name would be a fitting name for that why? state, and why is it important, see? I, which state are we talking about? Yeah, which state are we talking about? Hmm. One in red. When you see. When you see. But it takes a hell of a lot. Like when you were exploring it, when you're exploring a lot of problems, including with me or whoever, sometimes it's like, this does not make any sense at all. He is going down a blind alley. You know, and I'm like, there's no point in even, you know, sometimes I don't even want to leave. But I stick it out, and then it's like suddenly it's like, oh my god, it makes, you know, you see it, and it goes, it's like. What's your name for that state? Mm -hmm. You got it. Eso, eso. Well, that's just. Como se llama? <laughs> just. How's it called? Seeing. Yeah, what kind? What name rational, do you put on it? Rational, it's rational. Is there a well, Buddhist? It's is rational, there a... but a lot of things are rational that won't take on that particular it's name. Beneficent, it's, it's everything. It's brilliant light of being. I would say. Brilliant. It's brilliantly light, light. But I'm interested in the steps that led up to that seeing. That's equally that worth putting a name on, by the way. Mm. How about a, a just state? Yes. Like a state of justice. Yes, be, be because well, just a virtue. virtue. It's a real virtue. Look here. <laughs> That's certainly one of the names for virtue. Justice. What, what kind of state is justice? 
it has a lot of integrity. Yeah, 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 that's true. What kind of state is it? What yeah. about the truth? Truth it's very clear. Yeah, that's true. It's beautiful. Yeah, but that is. <laughs> well, it's a it's a pretty monumentous task to put it all into one word. No, it's not. Word. No, it's not. But How can we fit it all in one word? It's it the did one. already, but now you have to justify it. You didn't have any trouble coming to the name. <laughs> oh, so we have the name, and that's what, a just state? No, but it's only if you can tell me what to, what would define or describe that state so that it's different <coughs> from other states. The self. Well, it, it's, it, it has a, a kind of a complete integrity to it where there isn't any... I mean, it's very honest. It's, it's completely honest. It has to be. Yeah. And it... it I, I, I like the word complete yeah. because there isn't... Yeah. You can't like... It's not wishy-washy where, yeah. yeah, yeah. where you can... Yeah. You know, yeah. cheat your way into yeah. it. Oh, it's perfect then. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because it's different from. What do you got, Jane? Oh, she's got something. She's looking. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I do. What do you got? I have a quote from the Republic. Of what? A justice. Oh. And it fits. Maybe you we should get her to read. <laughs> and see whether or not your set of words matches it, or whether you needed these words to match it. Go ahead. But in truth, justice, it appears, was something like this. Not, however, in a man's outward practice, but inwardly, and truly, he must do his own business in himself. He must not have allowed any part of himself to do the business of other parts, mm. nor the parts in his soul to meddle in many businesses with each other. But he must have managed his own well, and in himself have ruled himself, and set all in order, and become a friend to himself. That's what I see in that moment, that you become a friend to yourself. That's one part. He must have put all three parts in tune within him, highest and lowest and middle, mm -hmm. exactly like the three chief notes of a scale, and any other interval between that there may be, he must have bound all these together and made himself completely one out of many. That's another part. Temperate and concordant. All those three are there. And then only do whatever he does getting of wealth or care of, bo of the body or even matters of state or private contract. In all these, he must believe and name as just and beautiful dealing whatever practice preserves this condition and works along with it. And as wisdom, he must name the knowledge which presides over this practice. But as unjust dealing, so, he must name yeah, whatever dissolves so, it. Um, Sorry. Do you like that book? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Would it make any difference if you read uh, Balboa's translation of the same passage? I'll get it. God. Oh. Are Hold we on. in a good house? <laughs> she knows how it is exactly. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> a house of knowledge. Yeah, that's a special kind of knowledge, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The Why is it needed? To, to, to help stabilize the world. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> If you're in that state, you have to manage it. You have to know what maintains it. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to be in the state. Mm -hmm. You have to have a knowledge that can support it and bring it about so that it's more fully developed or especially its continuity. Because whatever that practice is that maintains it, that's wisdom. That's a special kind of knowledge, which he calls wisdom. Now, what, read it? Um, but and, the, and we'll see whether it makes a damn bit of difference to read one or the other. But the truth of this is that justice indeed... Hold it. Hold 
Okay, go ahead. But the truth of this is that justice indeed resembles something like this, but not in regards to doing the works of doing to to the doing of the works of self externally, but as in regards to that which is internal, in the true way, in regards to itself, and to those matters that are of itself in self. They must not allow any genus in the soul to do the work belonging to another, nor to engage in many businesses with each other. But by truly setting its own home in order, and by self ruling self, while adorning and becoming a friend to itself, by tuning the three beings of its soul in the most simple manner as three harmonic rules, the lowest, highest, and middle, and all others there if they happen being between them, by having bound together all these terms, and out of many having become perfectly one, sound and in tune. Thus in this way self immediately knows what must be done, if anything is to be done. Do that part again. Thus in this way self immediately knows what must be done, if anything is to be done, mm -hmm. whether in the acquisition of wealth or concerning the care of body or in any public or private contracts. Mm -hmm. And in all these cases, on the one hand, being led to see and define the action as being beautiful and elegant which will preserve and bring to completion this disposition. And the knowledge which presides over this action, wisdom, but on the other hand, being led to see and define that reaction as unjust. Yeah. It uh, doesn't make any difference which one you read about, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, in what way? Because he's saying that this all relates to the self. That's, you know, it's not a... That's it's, true, it's but is there any particular thing that's different there about the self that is missing in Rausch? Well, he has, uh, and by self-ruling self, that's, that's one true. difference. Um, uh, I forget what it was, but uh, do you recall what I asked you to reread? The section on justice. Yeah, I re -read. Asked you Oh, that middle. one. Okay. Um, Thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done. So at that moment, when you see. In what areas? Uh, if anything, uh, whether in the acquisition of wealth or concerning the care of body or any public or private contracts. Gina, I'm sorry, could you do it one more time? I sure. went out. So, uh, by Wait, the way. Sorry, uh, I need just, just to hear that quote one more sure. time. Uh, thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done. Immediately oh, knows spontaneity, yeah. right? Thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done. No. That's By the way, do, do you have any books on Buddhism? Uh, yeah, some. Do you have three or four uh, pillars of Zen? Whichever yeah. you uh, have, uh, a sequel uh, for or, or, or three, yeah. four, <laughs> or book one of one pillar, or yeah. I have a feeling it's not going to be as satisfying. Actually, there'll be an interesting which, parallel. Which one? Yep. The pillars. Oh, yeah. The pillars of Zen. Oh yeah. Okay, you're either right or wrong. <laughs> Sorry. It was only three, but I won't hold it. Right? <coughs> Sorry? Uh, my colleague, he said made a comment, and I said, yes, he's going to be either right or wrong. That's, you are <laughs> so yeah, right. I wanted to be prophetic. It was prophetic, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you later about a kind of dreaming I've been doing that I really, I haven't been bringing them in. There's two reasons for that. But one is that they're like I'm composing as I go, 
so I don't know if they'd fit in the class of lucid dreaming. I feel like I'm completely composing the dream. But that bring, that brings me to so I don't feel like it's a real dream. I feel no, like no, I'm no, going no 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 no. I no, want to no, go. Hey, hey. I want to change that too. This is what we this is what we talked about last Friday. Yeah. That's immediate. Sure. <laughs> it's exactly that's, the issue. That's, that's a different stage. It's worthwhile doing. Hmm. Okay. What is? I missed that part. Huh? It was because just a question. you're bringing yourself to do something in addition. That's important. Or differently. Like yeah, this morning, differently. differently. Well, it seems like my dreaming is is. I'm, I'm directing it, you know, and yeah, not in a good way. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm it's like, I don't want to be doing that. I'm going to do this. And so I, I, I change the, and I, I see all the imagery just like it's a real dream, but, but I'm doing all the stage managing, which might still reveal a level of problem that would be quite interesting. I just realized that. I, for one, would love to see it. Okay. I'll see if I can bring one. There is a chat that we had with Pierre last Friday yeah. on this very topic. Did yep. you catch it? Yep. <laughs> well, I say that, but what specifically of that talk do you have reference to? The original question that I gave to Pierre was... Um, about lucid dreaming, right? About lucid dreaming. And it seems to me that there are levels of lucidity in dreams, and yours is clearly... Um, uh, not a beginning level of lucidity. You're, you're reaching a, at least a middling, if um, not an advanced level of lucidity. And second paragraph. that means that you're making decisions and you're changing the course of the dream itself, right? So my question to him was, when you reach that level of lucidity, are you not um, okay, we destroying, that destroying the... So okay, but hold on no, a second. No, 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 continue. Okay. <clears throat> Are you not destroying the internal integrity of the dream itself as it was originally set up by the Dream Master, mm -hmm. A, and B, um, is it possible that you are um, subverting the growth process, or, or right? Mm -hmm. And Pierre described a dream of his own yep, where... Yep, yep, I heard right? that. Okay, so... Um, ultimate answer is no, you're just choosing a different path for growth and it, it depends on what you're going to count as growth, right? Mm -hmm. I think that kind of answers your question, uh, but I'm, I tend to go rough shot over things so I probably miss some precision in there. In other words, there's still great value and I think I've never noticed good. you to go rough shot over anything. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, you pick your way delicately over oh, every single thank obstacle you. in the path and all the side roads. <laughs> and, and, right. And frankly, I, I see a synchronicity in it. You know, uh, right after we talk about that with Pierre, you're now describing do, having several more than one of these types. And like Eldar, I'm equally interested in seeing um, uh, how dream work, uh, midwifery, uh, growth all happen in lucid, in active lucid dreams. That's, that's awesome. And 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 what kind well, of growth that looks do. like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, Regina? Well, uh, Jariki, second paragraph. Okay, Jariki, the first of these, or is it the highest practice? There's several good points, so I don't. Um, he said second paragraph. Oh. Well, okay. Uh, Jariki, the first of these is the power or strength. Is that what you want? Please read. Okay, which arises when the mind has been unified and brought to one pointedness through concentration. This is more than the ability to concentrate in the usual sense of the word. It is a dynamic power which, once mobilized, enables us, even in the most sudden and unexpected situation, to act instantly, without pausing to collect our wits, and in a manner wholly appropriate to the circumstances. One who has developed Jariki is no longer a slave to his passions, neither is he at the mercy of his environment. Okay. What did, what did you say? Yeah, it sounds very similar. Right? <coughs> to the yeah. description. Uh, by the way, yes. did that add anything? Remember, you didn't think it would? I don't know if it added anything. Well, you did express the idea that it may not be fruitful. No, I, I said it may not be as fruitful. Well, then, do you think it was as fruitful? No, I don't think so. 
I think it was very fruitful, but not as fruitful. Okay. Now you should be able to line up those two statements and make a judgment about them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree the whole idea of justice hung on one expression? What was that expression we asked you to read it again? Um, that's in this no, no. In Rouse. Oh. Or, uh, pardon me, in the Balboa. Thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. In the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Does the Jariki add more to it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet consistent with it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Then, then the whole game that we're in is to move from and hey from suffering what appears to us to be an injustice mm -hmm. right then you go through this exploration and you see you are not the victim you're not the victim right wow not the victim If you're not the victim, you're not suffering an injustice. Mm. And you can act in the moment, justly. And you can see what's going on in that early scene that produced it. And that kind of scene opens up to the experience of justice. justice. And in that state, whatever you do, it's most appropriate to the circumstances and the response spontaneous without even thinking about it you can do whatever you're doing it seems appropriate to give them is that right yeah. what is it that makes you not the victim that's good <laughs> that's right that's no I don't get that I want to know I want to know what it is I yes but first of all is it true so that's why I was cautious ah uh, yeah is it true that in the initial circumstance you no. were not the victim no no that's oh, when you see it. Yes. Absolutely true. Right, right, right. Wait, what's the question? Right. He's saying, is it true? Are you saying, when he say, is it true, is a person being unjust uh, playing out their game truthfully? And then do you need to react at that moment? Yeah, you see, in that moment, do you not see it wasn't you? Yes. It's what they're doing. Yes. So then do you need to even react at all? So wait a minute, you're giving the assignment of injustice and suffering injustice to the wrong person. Right. They're unjust. Yes. Oh, yes. I see what you're saying. So it's a, it's, hey. Hmm. See? You're no longer doing this. Yeah. But if you're not blaming your, if you're blaming yourself for the suffering that you endure, doesn't that make you the creator of your own suffering? Yes. Yep. And doesn't that make you the victim? Yes. <laughs> and who is to blame? Yes. So. But the person doesn't see that until they go through the pursuit. Okay. Okay. And then when they see that, then they then they, that they're not the cause of their own suffering. Right. But rather the transmission of the pathologos, their acceptance, right. and playing it out. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Then, and they're that, not, then they're no longer the victim to yes. that degree. And why is it therefore important? Or, and hey, they're the no longer the most important the... thing is, you now have to give See, a name to these people who are doing this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if they look like good Christians, how can you say they're their evil? Huh? Yeah, that's, yeah. Very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> good, Julie. Good job. Wait a minute, go back to the issue. Right? What's our primary issue here? This question. Right? Is there a need for words as the unfoldment of the logos? Uh, which is necessary. There's a necessity, therefore, for philosophy. Does this show the necessity for putting these names on those things? Yes. Yeah. Jariki? And that? Oh, all uh, that, yeah. Justice yeah, yeah. and injustice. Yeah. Now you're using philosophy, are you not, in terms of using the language of philosophy? Yes. Then are you showing that if it's important to come to see this, 
Right. You're seeing the necessity for it? The logo. The, well, the yeah, putting words on things, the logos. logos. The unfolding. Philosophy. And, and philosophy, philosophy, yeah. And the language of philosophy. Mm. And the proper order and unfolding and yeah. all Can that I, stuff. Can I just make one point? I don't know. I'll judge. see. Uh, I, I just want to say that this is um, like the key because uh, <laughs> once you're not the victim, then you leave fate and then you can enter into destiny. That's right. Uh, be, uh, so then. That's right. Fate is the problem. Yeah. So, so then when you, once you're not the victim, ah. that's when you can be in that state of mind. Right. Where you can act justly in the moment. Yeah. Mm. Uh, because you're not bound and you're not the victim. So you can, um, the description of wisdom, then you can enter into See, that state. Yes, See, there are a lot of things that you're now seeing. And the question is, do you need all of them when you make your judgment that you just made? Like, it's important to put a name on those people. Is it important to address those people even in the present and tell them what it is you are seeing about what they are doing? So is how important is that? That that reminds me of uh, our talk a week ago about you know when we go study and we come back home we we gain all this knowledge. And we bring back home, and we're going to tell everybody the things that we know, and that could also be a problem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're, you're saying, is it important to do that at that moment with some of these people, whether we're the victim or not? Yes, more. And so, if, 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 so if we're the victim, like Eldar says, um, we could be in this petrified state, perhaps, not knowing how to act or how to address it, but if we're a bystander and we see the injustice taking place, good. maybe we could... That's good saying. Could, uh, do you like talking that way? I, I do, but I don't like being the victim. No, no, no. You, you enjoy this kind of discussion. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're doing philosophy, then. A different brand of philosophy. Mm -hmm. Not what's taught in the schools. Got that right? right. By the way, what are the implications of this on psychology? <laughs> you ever talk about psychology in any of the talks you've ever had at the university? <laughs> they become your huh? enemy. Sure. You never talk at the university about psychology to anyone? Oh, oh, okay. I, have. Uh, I thought you once used to lecture about psychology at the university. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, what does this do to you? It's doing it right now, isn't it? Uh, well, I have a question about that Jariki. I, right about, I have right to about, go back right, to right uh -huh. What's it doing to you? Makes me interested in writing, doing some writing. Yeah. Mm. Because, come on, because. Well, it just is, makes it more intelligible. Yeah. And, um, Therefore, what would it do to psychology? You're a psychologist. Well, it seems like this is what psychology should be. Oh. This is why I got into psychology, because I thought this was. About the self. About the soul. Never is. So now you're going to, come on. Well, it reminds me now that first sentence you have, the appearance of virtue is what's required for vice. So it's like the appearance of the soul is, the appearance of philosophy is what's required for Yeah, you need the bullshit. idea of soul. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The self, yeah. yeah. Hey, Gina, what's the implication of this on psychology? <laughs> Panic. 
Yes. I can't believe that this would even be psychology, but I can't ignore it because it's rich and it has meaning. How come I missed it? No, it can't be that. And that's, suddenly, that's the logos of the psychologist, is that right? Revert back to... It can't be that. Nope. Because? Because I didn't study it in school. I didn't, nobody... I didn't see this before. I've never seen this. And therefore it can't be in psychology. Can't be in psychology. Yeah, see what kind of thinking? Yeah. Well, I think that's... I yeah. Think it, put, right? that's it would take them completely out of the tradition yeah, that they paid a lot for take them completely and suffered out. a lot of bullshit for. Yeah. They, yeah. they suffered. So it's loyalty. So it's a loyalty. It is a rude clan. Yeah. It's such it's like a loyalty. Plan. It's it's uh, well. You, I think what you guys are putting your fingers on this. Uh, it can't be the suffering, the loyalty. The underlying issue is, is such a gross. I want to say betrayal, but it's an injustice. Injustice. Yeah, it's a betrayal. The modern world. But it's on such a grand scale of injustice. That's right. It's cultural genocide. Wow. And it's just Western it, it, Europe yeah. is cultural genocide against the mind, right. against the Greeks. Yeah. That's a massive counterattack. Right? It's just a minor, though. Apart from that, it's okay. <laughs> well, what's, it, what's interesting is, what about the people who would consider themselves wordsmiths, the English teachers, the Word field Smith. of English, <laughs> right? I was just thinking, they're they're even sicker than the psychologists, but I don't even know if you you can get leverage imagine, against yeah. it they're the because they're such relativists. They're such right. I mean, can you get leverage against an English teacher who says everything is interpretation? Right? There's no real meaning behind anything except my statement. Oh, <laughs> yeah, true. Am I a professor? Except my statement. Right, just that one statement. You don't challenge that. <laughs> And I am the professor. Shall we look at the etymology of that word? <laughs> Different kind of English. I was thinking of the interpretive school. But um, I have a question too. What about Prajna, Pierre? And it's kind of a technical question. Because I thought Prajna was that which enabled you to make, well, mm -hmm. as wisdom. No. Well, uh, in that word, no, no, I got it's very, it. very clear that uh, Yasutani is speaking at that point, and he's pointing out that even in Japan there are many roshis that confuse Jiriti with enlightenment or prajna. Uh, mm. Like, uh, years ago I was once with Alan Watts and we used to have visiting Buddhists coming in, and uh, they were really fun discussions. In some way I was there to Bug, bug them. <laughs> <laughs> I was the, brought into the gadfly. <laughs> yeah. Gadfly, but uh, in many cases, uh, and later, even Yasutani said this: that Zen Buddhism is Japanese; it's not exportable. Hmm. So then, when Maizumi built his temple, it was all Japanese. Even the monks started speaking English with a Japanese accent. Right? Yeah. The whole scene was mirroring the culture of Japan. So when um, our good friend, the author of Three Caplo. Pillars, uh -huh. Caplo, started a center in Arizona, and he invited good old Roshi Asatani there, he was shocked and said, this is not Buddhism. Because they were all sitting for dinner at tables. Mm. They had their own beds. Mm. And I think Kap Kaplo even invented, he reinvented their, 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 their clothing. Yeah. It looked almost like a farmer's bib. Yeah. He, right. he, he purposely went into, he That's said, right. we got to reinvent this. Yeah. we got to make it American. Yeah. See, the difficulty, of course, is the person who really made it American left it, and no one is really talking about that. Who? Uh, Bernie. 
Classical. Classical. Classman. Yeah, because he turned in it right. He turned in his robes, and he became a clown. Mm. Mm. And he went around Tetsu. having fun with kids, being a clown. Mm -hmm. A real clown. Yeah. A real clown. Yes, a real clown. <laughs> Dressed that way, you know, in his face and everything with the makeup. And then, of course, later went back, becoming a, a caretaker of me. Of me uh, Mizumi's records and well, he, he started that whole bakery in the yeah. in the Harlem too. Yeah, and got people employed. Yeah. Oh, is that, that the uh, what do they call it? Um, I think of the one you're talking yeah. about. Okay. He, he yeah. Okay. He Americanized it and then quit. He said the hell with it. <laughs> he did Buddhism on the street. I don't know if he, he said the hell with it, but <laughs> he no longer. Dress the robes and can we, we won't backtrack quote that. to your earlier point though? That um, so this is part of a larger point, uh, Zen not being exportable, but of course the core of it is obviously. But that was part of well, an earlier point. Can the you, Jariki and the Prajna issue. Uh, okay, All right. that's where I would like to go back to. So you're saying that Yasutani could see a distinction between enlightenment or Prajna and Jariki? Yeah, as a matter of fact. Uh, Continue reading the next paragraph, and he but did. does that mean we need to see it in our? Yes, of course. Well, Pierre talked about that a couple of weeks ago, right? The two ways of getting. Yeah. Jiriki, the brilliant light of being, and then Jiriki yeah. was the second. They go in different directions. Right. But I thought Jiriki was like Thumos, the building up of Thumos. Well, that's always true. Mm -hmm. So where in that distinction, Jules and Prajna? No, talk about it. Hey, well, great quote. Go ahead. Gina's got it. Uh, well, Watch what he does with it. Let's see. I don't know where I got Prashna. Where's Prashna? It's the next paragraph. Okay. The first two of the five kinds of Zen I have spoken about depend entirely on Jiriki, as does the state of Mush Mushinjo in Sojo, Sojo Zen. The state of blankness in which the conscious functioning of the mind has been stopped. Now, although the power of Jiriki can be endless, endlessly enlarged through regular practice, it will recede and eventually vanish if we neglect Zazen. And while it is true that many extraordinary powers flow from Jiriki, nevertheless, through it alone, we cannot cut the roots of our illusor illusory view of the world. Mere strength mm. of concentration is not enough for the highest types of Zen. Concomitantly, there must be Satori awakening. In a little known document handed down by Patriarch Sikito Kensi, Kinsen, the founder of one of the early Zen sects, the following appears. In our sect, realization of the Buddha nature and not mere devotion or strength of concentration is paramount. He doesn't mention Prajna, but... Well, uh, is that it's not the same as Buddha nature? So read it again. So the whole paragraph? No, no, just the last one. In our sect, realization of the Buddha nature and not mere devotion or strength of concentration is paramount. Negative definitions don't help. Yeah. By negative definite, uh, don't help, do you mean that he is not explaining Buddha nature? No. Then what do you mean? Or Prajna. No, oh, you do agree, okay. It's an ina like an all negative assertion. They tell us what it's not. It's, you know, it's the elephant, you know, a blind man goes along and feels the legs of an elephant and he comes to a conclusion about the nature of the elephant since he's never seen the head or the yeah. Etc. This is the Buddha's uh, original story. Yeah. So. But. Um, so there's but another quote so Tina's going to go. Oh, okay. Oh. She's got to go a little further. Right. They did make a distinction between Jiriki, as it had been just been described, and seeing that through the illusory nature, right? But see, he said of reality. Mm. Mm. Ah. Yeah. So that does he mean the world of becoming? Mm -hmm. Or did he? Ah, so he's not talking. Hmm. 
They didn't use the idea of self as an example. Right, right. But for him, it's reality, that is, which is being. Uh, the question of whether or not the parallel in this case would be between being and uh, prajna, rather than the first hypothesis. Mm. Have we... I, I do have a question, but I, she's wants to... Well, he does say that, uh, well, he doesn't say self, but he says true nature. The second of these aims is Kensho Kodo, seeing into your true nature, and at the same time, seeing into the ultimate nature of the universe and all the 10,000 things in it. Mm. So again, it's, it's external. It is the sudden realization that I have been complete and perfect from the beginning. How wonderful, how miraculous. If it is true Kensho, its substance will always be the same for whoever experiences it. Yeah. What do you pull out of it as a basis for understanding Prajna? True nature and ultimate nature of the universe. But I just say true nature. No, no. Your true nature. Come on, read it again. Okay. The second of these aims is Kensho Koda, Kodo, seeing into your true nature and at the same time seeing into, at the same time, seeing into the ultimate nature of the universe and that's, all the 10,000 things that, in it. That's so you're secondary. one. secondary. Keep going. It is the re sudden realization that I have been complete and there perfect from the beginning. What is it? It is the sudden realization that I have been complete and perfect from the beginning. Right. Hmm. That's where he now gets into this, the self. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Second is hmm. identifying the insights into the nature of reality hmm. the way the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's very nice, you know, but it ain't. So this Justice is a, is different than that state where yeah. I have been complete and perfect from the beginning. Sure. Why do you think so? Were you asking or telling? I am wondering. Oh because no, no! I don't wonder. Answer. Well, at that moment, there is a realization that what you see or saw was right and right. That's not the same but thing. No, it isn't. So I don't know what it means to be complete yes, do. and perfect. <laughs> That's not the question. The question is whether you can make the distinction. Oh, yeah, I can make that distinction. Mm. Well, in, in the justice, he says that you have to kind of harmonize all the parts within your soul. But that's not complete and perfect. That's different. Oh, don't know okay. what that would be. You're picking up a secondary understanding of justice, mm -hmm. which is okay. Well, it, it does talk about pulling all the parts <coughs> and unifying it, but That's this is... secondary. Yeah, this is different. There's a complete imperfection. I don't know what that is. What would that be? Oh, well. Strange. Yeah, you dropped the key point in oh. justice in the Baboa translation. Not that you not that you didn't find those points in it. Remember the point I wanted you to repeat again? Oh, the sudden realization. Of what? Uh hmm. I don't remember. Yeah, well, look at her. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know. Mm. Immediately was the word used, right? I was just trying to bring it back to myself. Immediately. Yeah. It's immediate, but so, what's immediate? So we're down to audio now, and I ran out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add for everybody. So <clears throat> Pierre is having uh, Regina 
compare. She's gone and grabbed her Balboa Republic. No. Okay, suddenly, immediately knows what must be done. Thank you. The self immediately knows, right? Or um, Read it again. Watch. Thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done. The self must know immediately what must be done in any of those arenas. Yeah, that's different than... And suddenly is spontaneity. Right. That's 443E. That's a different realization than yeah. it is the sudden realization that I am, I have been complete and perfect from the beginning. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That's a different realization, all right. Yeah. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, you don't yeah. don't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> To go back to the same question. So we get all three of them? Yeah. Like, uh, what, what does this do to psychology? <laughs> so I what, what are we doing? We're doing this, making the comparisons. We're trying to see whether we can agree that there's a certain name that's necessary. We want to see the distinctions behind them are clear in our thinking. I have to go back over to make sure you hold on fast to it. Yeah. Right. Well, it looks like there's a rectification of names for psychology because it's not psychology that what they're doing. They're like bald headed tinkers. That what they call themselves the black box. Don't go into it. Yep. That's right. They don't want to go into right. this at all. Nothing meaningful. Whose quote was that? Black box. Skinner. Right. How an interesting name, Skinner. You don't go into the black box. Hmm. You don't need to just judge everything by behavior. That's empirical. Hmm. Ha, ha, ha. Let's say with the empirical. Then we don't have to That's get into you. the mind. The mind. Oh, just that. I would add. Um, <laughs> In in the in Regina's rectification of names vein, um, sophists, because they're convincing you that you are something other. For instance, uh, at my workplace, we have psychologists come in for uh, HR training, and you can take classes, uh, sometimes optional, sometimes required, um, for employee development. Mm -hmm. And uh, inevitably, they bring you know, they roll out some kind of <coughs> scale or some kind of um, what's the Meyer Riggs Meyer that Meyer's Riggs, Riggs. Or, or or variations of these, oh, and they end up. Uh, I, I I'm never satisfied with what they end up with, but by the end of uh, this whole rigmarole, you and everybody else in the room are classified into. Uh, I've been to several of these, so it can it can vary. You can get four, six, eight, depending on which models they use, categories. And so they present an image of having done something with you. And now you can look at all your fellow employees and go, oh, Martha, you're a IJK, or you're, a, <laughs> you're an extrovert that thinks... And, and now we can all relate and empathize with each other. And, um, and it absolutely does... Shinola when you get back to the workplace. It does nothing. But they pres uh, the reason I'm Shinola. adding sophist to the label is that they're presenting an image of knowledge that is not. Yes, they have a monopoly on meaning. <laughs> <laughs> and no. they're property stricken. It's bad. That was the military. The big military. When the military got involved with clinical psychology after World War I. Just and World War II, testing became the. Yeah. In fact, you could only get a clinical psychology. You were only qualified to be a clinical psychologist if you had a PhD in education and testing. Just yeah. That was is, the main is this thing. What you're testing. testing. I did one of these. Sure. So they could decide where yeah, to this put is, you this, in that's the. That's, the sure. that's one of the battlefield and get you killed or. <laughs> it's interesting because I've taken so those tests. Mili it's military. The different, the different tests, the MMPI, all of them, mm -hmm. many of them, yeah. fires things. And I'd love, and and what I do is I consciously know what's going to happen. So I just answer the questions. Mm. 
according to what I know it's going to end up being. So I can manipulate it after a point, and I'm going, this is ridiculous. There, and, and so it's like I come up with different personalities. I'm all over the place with their results, and I'm going, so, okay, the tragedy, so you don't really know me. So the tragedy is that these people with their degrees qualify for posts all over the country, and they then have power but not an operating knowledge to justify it. Right. Like your study, like you talked about, that you were with the psychologist, <coughs> who stayed in her office. She was afraid to go out and do any therapy. Mm -hmm. That's what happens, because they, they have the reputation of having backgrounds that justify a, a learning which can be applied in psychotherapy, and in fact they don't have the kind of learning. It doesn't justify their role, but they have all of these great positions all over the place, and they're being paid for something they're totally unqualified to do. Including torture. Of, of course. Torture no was the final test of psychology. Well, until Cambridge Analytica came along with those personality tests that they were giving people oh on God, Facebook. Here we go. And Hazley. It's yeah. more than Hazley. It's, they have no, no principles, no vision, no... Nothing. Nothing. They're just a bunch of... So where are we going to put them in the sixth, maybe, or they, seventh? It, it's like time Nine. for the real psychology Nine. to step up. <laughs> Sorry, Julie, say that again. Just forget about psychology. Just go to philosophy. Can, um, psychology. I'm sorry, I'm going to raise it up to eight. I, I'm just... <laughs> Finish, don't let me step I'm on just, you. I'm um, just, um... It's bad. Psychology should just be eliminated. The, uh, you kept your receipt, right? <laughs> receipt, yeah. Uh, have we explored... Psychology should be eliminated because it's shit. Is that the no, no, sorry. Good. That was that. Yeah. Shit's got some. That was a verbal nutrition. Slow. Barbara, have we? Uh, no, you, no, know. you had a question. Yeah. Go for it. Have Psyche. we explored um, the place for justice in the hypotheses? Have we explored? <laughs> on, in, in what we are you talking about, my friend? Parmenides. The Parmenides group. Yeah. Uh, well, I justice? think justice because yeah. we yeah, yeah many 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 times put in. In the second, well, I mean, kind of in the second, inferred from the second because of brilliant light of being, because justice was justice, beauty. But it has to good. admit of degrees because if you're if you're at the high, if you're at the absolute maximum experience of brilliant light of being, you're not going to be able to make distinctions. Inferred. That's why I use the word inferred. Oh, okay. So what am inferred. I missing in the inferred? Well, it, yeah. Well, I think. Pierre and the Republic make the point that after you look at the sun in its own place, then that's when you can reason about it and come to the right and Can't come to the conclusion. realization that it's the cause of all right, no. that it's the cause of all growth and yeah. nurture and right. To that degree, you have to be back out of it then. Yeah. So I guess what I'm talking, what I'm thinking is uh, maybe third hypothesis uh, in the sense of going in and out and in and out. Why is it even in there? Is it even no? in there? It has no place in it. Justice, Justice has no place in the third. Really? Well, that just leaves no, no. The, qual the states of mind are called virtues have no correlation with the hypothesis. Ah, that's where I was thinking it was going to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. really? Now, what do we do with that? Because we have well, concluded see, in the past, have we not, see, that... No, see, if this makes sense... Pointing to the board. It is not possible to see what we're doing in Plato. Mm. There is no midwifery, there's no pathologos, there's no searching for states of mind that we're talking about. Mm. But there is justice. Well, he, he certainly has the idea of justice, but it doesn't mean that he's able to understand the nature of injustice. Do you remember when we were doing the Republic seminar mm -hmm. and we talked about the fact that it's a downward, sorry, it's yeah. a downward path yeah. from the highest, you know, yeah. philosopher king to the tyrant, and there's no going, there's no going back, there's no 
remedy. That, so, and I was just adding that you were saying there's no midwifery, there's no exploration of states of mind, negative states of mind, beliefs that are imposed in the in the Plato. So, um, and that's one reason why it only goes downwards, yeah. right? Yeah, it has no role for understanding injustice. But therefore, he does have an idea of what justice is, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have because he's not Homeric. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you the, mean he doesn't understand injustice as in, uh, vice having the yeah. image of virtue? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I still I'm not sure that we've uh, arrived at whether the go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm on here. If there, if there would be a place in the allegory of the cave, it would be when that gentleman releases them from chains and asks them questions about what they mm. see. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of midwifery. But it doesn't mm. work after they hear right. what it is he's exploring with them. They rush back to where they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. What works is that he has to take one of those people and drag right. them up the deep ascent. It isn't through any understanding that they're free of their chains. Mm. Oh. That's not part of the drama because he doesn't understand it himself. Mm -hmm. So my question is, wow. in the in that book, the three pillars of Zen, they talked Too about the perfection, perfection that you are perfect and complete yes. from the beginning, right? That that's yeah. the state of realization, sudden realization, right? Gotcha. Would you say though that that is or approaches the self because? Sure. Oh, it does. Okay, sure. so that means they don't. They only mean perfection and completion as a as a metaphor. Mm, yes or no? So, because I thought that if you put the word completion mm -hmm. or perfection really on something, it's giving it that sense of mm, culmination. Perfection has a sense of culminating or being the culmination, or being the ideal. Sure. But completion, yeah. having the last brick drop into place. Yeah, so everything you're saying is, is correct. Yes. But the essential thing in Plato is that he does not in any way describe what it would be in that highest state. He has no exploration of the one or the good. Yeah. He offers what he says would be a, a, a birth of, uh, an offspring of the good, not the good. The idea of good. Mm -hmm. And therefore there's only one paragraph and two sentences in all the Republicans deal with the idea of the one, mm -hmm. or the first hypothesis. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Actually, my reference was to the three pillars of Zen. Oh, okay. And the idea of perfection yes. and completion. Oh, oh Whether oh. you would allow that those were terms that would just describe an ultimate state. Yeah. And the because I thought that, um, and I might be too picky, but I was wondering whether they only mean it metaphorically. They meaning the Buddhists, like when you have this sudden realization, it's I'm complete. From I've always been complete. I'm perfect. I'm always been perfect, and that's it's inadequate. Inadequate. Yes. I would agree. Rather, why? It's inadequate because someone who is experienced in brilliant light of being could say the same thing. Ah. Okay. So what would we need to right? up its quaintness? Well, How would we make it adequate? Oh, that's next next week where you hand in a coupon. And, Yay! And <laughs> <laughs> so, really, it comes down to uh, uh, how how. So it's a really an ancient question, but uh, how much does Plato owe to Socrates? 
and how much does Plato understand about what Socrates is doing? Uh -huh. right. Why? Because it's clear that Socrates related to Parmenides. Right? And he places him in such an honorific place that we can assume he was at least so influential that he might be called his teacher. But he doesn't cover the major idea in Parmenides, which is the one so, except in that one hypothesis. He meaning Plato? Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't really talk about the impact of the Parmenides first hypothesis on Socrates, right. right? Or what he was like right. before and after, so to speak. Or what he was experiencing in that Maha Samadhi of the so. symposium as re reported by, what, Alcibiades. See, the, the issue is, uh, 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 it, it comes down to this first question, which is, how important is it word? How important are words? Mm. Because in one way, uh, everyone everyone experiences the highest state, mm -hmm. but they don't know it. They don't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And it's only. It's only when they, when they develop the need for the kinds of words that will de understand where they're at, that they can appreciate where they're at. That's what we just did. Mm. Pointing to the board. Right? The need for words. We're now using a certain vocabulary to name the state of seeing at the moment of one seeing and the nature of a pathologos. Right? Which goes Is back. that worthwhile? Yes. Because then you can own it. Then it kind of it becomes yours, and it's like. So the same thing is needed for enlightenment experiences. Again, pointing at the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meaning. Because this touches on, and approaches enlightenment experiences. And the Buddhas are right. right. Many people call that state enlightenment, but it's not. Hmm could easily be confused with it. Uh, that state, you're talking Jariki and Justice? Yeah, Prajna and Jariki. And again, you're not going to get in the Buddhist literature uh, any definitive understanding of it because they don't use words in that. They don't have a tradition for identifying words. Rather recognition of states. Yeah. Hmm. Some so where would we find that? Well, I don't know. Maybe in maybe in uh, uh, the lost teachings of uh, Gabriel Osanovich. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm I'm being kind. Of Have you ever read him? No. Oh, okay. So in working through the his, second, his full name was Son of a Bitch. They uh. <laughs> trans they, they reduced it to Osanovich in order to <laughs> yeah censorship yeah. <laughs> so the first second, the sec would second be complete and perfect, or would it be the first uh, the, from the, the beginning? The same, the same. First, the seems like it would be the same. See, the thought. same statement, same statement could make could be made for, for both. Yeah. Therefore, it's inadequate. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's better than. Nothing, maybe, or maybe it isn't. Hmm. Hmm. And again, it depends upon uh, uh, what kind of demands you want to make for the mind. The ultimate. That's all. Apart from that, it's easy. Hmm. The ultimate demand. Huh? The ultimate demand. <laughs> I'd settle for the penultimate. <coughs> right. Um, um, Just like the I birds. gave a talk at Waldorf, the mm. fifth grade kid. Mm. Wow. 
Yeah, and one kid said, uh, I asked him any questions. So one kid said, why, you know, uh, where do we come from? No, wait, did you, do you give a talk as a philosopher or something? Okay. Fear nods, yes. And they could answer, ask you anything. Yeah. Okay. The kids said, <laughs> like, I said, what do you mean? Do you mean, uh, uh, what were you doing before you, your parents were, were born? Hmm. Go on. Right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. He's, okay. he's making a facial great expression question. of a kid so, waking up. Um, <laughs> that's a great Another one in the back row said, uh, um, um, say, is, is, uh, 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 why is it? You know, why is there? Hmm. So I said, well, you mean, um, uh, 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 everything, including your dog? He said, yeah, including my dog. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah. Why is there? That was the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Three words. I'm getting the kids to. Yeah. And they're having a ball, so. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, uh, it's the first time they talked about anything. Some of them are slapping one another. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, yeah, well, you, you know, you guys are pretty good, you got, you got the good questions. Uh, uh, I said, why well, does this include uh, why you're here? Why are you there? <laughs> no, why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? Yeah, why are we here? Why? You mean, you mean uh, in, in, in this class? I said, yeah, you can put it that way, too. Mm -hmm. All the kids, the fifth grade, they're all philosophers. And they're eating. Yeah. It'll be killed by the time they get in the sixth They've got maybe. logos. <laughs> They've got, they're playing with logos. So, so this but is they'll have it to reflect on. So, so yeah. Sam will remember. <laughs> so this is the power of, of words. Yeah. No, 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 this is the issue that I'm raising. Oh is uh, what what kinds of things do you want answers mm. to if one follows from a state of so-called of wisdom or knowing or pure knowing is this the same question that you asked us last night out in front what kind of thinking oh what kind of thinking requires a proper object yeah uh, mm. What you know, kind like, of thinking is, uh, is there some reason why Plato has a myth of the next world? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it, one would hope so. If well, so, well, reason about it. What do you think? Hmm. Do you think uh, it must follow that he should have some insight into it because of what he's he going to kick off? He's a philosopher. Yeah. True. What kind of knowledge would that be? Does that presuppose that anyone who reaches that state might think metaphorically in those terms and generate similar analogies and mythologies? Well, perhaps. I, it, it's likely, I think. Uh, would the uh, mythologies also have some basis in reality? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, then what kind of knowing would tell you about the next world? I don't know. About or what the world was like before it began, <laughs> which is worthwhile knowing. Yes, just like the kid's question, kind of. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, about realities? Well, I didn't about know. enduring things that endure for eternity? About um, what kind of effect the life you live has on your soul? What you carry and into which ends the up next why world. Are you here? And 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 if, and if you in fact have a soul, should the person yeah, be able yeah. to say that too? Yeah. More cafe? Or warm it up for you? No, no, thank you. Mmm. <sighs> So like, well, that, that, doesn't that myth that Plato does give of the other world, doesn't it include 
the idea that you want to meet someone who can tell you what the effect of certain things in your life would be, so that you, in theory, so that you could pick um, a better life after you die. But it seems like it would also help you with information about living this life. You include in that, a lot of them. that uh, it should follow from that state whether or not uh, you choose your next reincarnation. It should follow from what state? Uh, if, if there is such a state as wisdom. Okay. If wisdom can be associated with the highest enlightened state. Okay. What kinds of questions can we expect such a person should be able to answer is what we're raising. Cool. Right? would be the best <coughs> life. The most okay. meaningful and significant. Right. And that raises the question of what is the relationship between Plato's stuff and the Tibetan tradition, hmm. Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, really. Right? Yeah. Because they have the Face to working face. out of the, the whole reincarnation and the grounds for it, etc., etc. Mm. And wouldn't you agree? What you'd like to do is to get Julie, yeah, to Julie give, us a, give us a talk about the difference between the Tibetan Book of the Dead and Plato's mythology dealing with the next world. Mm. Talking about the myth of Earth. Yeah, Maybe, and, yeah. And, and and all other myths the of Phaedrus Plato. And There's and also one in the Phaedo, the and there's one in the Oh, yeah. Soldiers, right? All the afterworld experiences. You'll get right on that. Yeah. <laughs> I know right where it is on my That'd bookshelf. That'd be great. Huh? I, I, I know right where to go on my bookshelf. Okay. And do you think it's fair to just give her a week so we can have it Friday? That'd be actually, good. Actually, actually, even if she put four... I'm on vacation this week, so I've got oh. time to burn, man. <laughs> even if in the next seven days she only put four sentences together on that subject, I would be grateful. Mm. Well, all right. For the for the start, right? That would give us something okay. to look into. I like that question. All right. So if you're not just being facetious and you want to take that up, mm -hmm. Jeff doesn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Okay. <laughs> Four sentences for you. <laughs> Man, everybody else gets the whole paper. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Boy, I don't think that's a very good answer. By the way. Should there be a whole tradition that preceded the Tibetans yes. through which they should be able to make some final statement, such as the Tibetan Book of the Dead and St. Yeah. Carol? I thought it was the Egyptians. I'm not against them. Okay. But I think even I've never cursed an Egyptian in my life. You asked me what about Egyptians, so now I thought see, I'd answer. See, I always thought Parmenides studied with Pythagoras. Pythagoras studied with the Egyptians. There, there are a lot of traditions. I go for them all. Okay. No, no. See the reason, but you're not following. Come on, stay okay. with it. Yeah. No, you are assuming Jesus. that there okay. may be. Let's have a. Yeah. Can't you stop the planes? Some, you know, Egyptian. Connection. Keep going. Keep going. Because they had a whole book of the dead too. An Egyptian book. They also have an Egyptian Book of the Dead, therefore you're going to include that in your study. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that may presuppose that just as the Buddhists must have had a background for studying mm -hmm. and the tradition they developed, so it may go back to the Egyptians. Is that right? Yeah. No, no, no. You know the budge work? B U D G. No. Oh. But the Egyptians. Get it. You'll 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 get it. What okay. work? Budge. Here. What work? Budge. B U D G. -E. On Egyptians? No. There's a professor who teaches Egyptology at Fullerton College where I work. Mm-hmm. And he said that they he's from Egypt. And he said that they communicate with the dead in today. You can communicate with the dead. It could the be mummies. said about any child. <laughs> no, sorry. Well, now look here. The spirit. Why don't you 
I don't can do us a favor. What? Let me check. Jeff, do you think she should do us a favor? Absolutely, no question. Jenny? Sure. Since you're so oh, good yeah. at doing huh? other people favors, right? Like okay. You need payback, yeah. Yeah, why don't you invite him here to give us a talk? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Why do you laugh? Because he's kind of an arrogant son of a bitch. Excellent. Let's, let's, perfect. Let's, let's They're all him. arrogant sons of a bitch. That's why they got the knowledge. He'll be in good company. They, with they the don't want to be human. They want to be. <laughs> fuck the peasants. <laughs> There's a bumper sticker for you. Okay. Right? Fuck yeah, the okay. peasants. I've been wanting to get to, to talk to him. Yeah. yeah. This is perfect. All peasants. right. Right? Yeah. Seems the arrogance might make him vulnerable. Yeah, by the way, when you invite him, would you like first set out a set of questions so that he knows what he's going to be talking about? Hmm. It's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. You could ask him whether he's made that kind of a comparison himself. It's good. Hmm? Oh, it's awesome. This is Costco. Black well, perhaps on Friday hours. we could come up with that list of questions after I talk about and no, no. we'll generate I, some questions. I think, I think we got a good number of them. Okay. How about whether he can make such a comparison? Oh. Um, whether he could you also ask him whether he's playing the game himself? Mm. He doesn't do comparisons well. He's he's just Egypt. Yeah, yeah, that's I asked him once about the um, yeah. Oh, he's one of those. About the so some, He says no, I don't go there. I just. There it I is. have a question for both of you, for anybody here. Did the Egyptologists have the same problem that the Indian researchers have? which is Pierre referred to a number of times. That's I'm right. completely ignorant in this area, but if it turns out, for instance, that the Indians were in any way influenced by the Platonists or any other tradition external, uh, they shut down and get very offended because theirs is the pure original oh, boy. race, the pure original spiritual tradition, right? Do the Egyptologists in any way suffer from this as well? No. This xenophobia of any other influence? Apparently, because he doesn't want to even talk about anything. It's kind of in the name, isn't it? It's a like it's it's or See, yeah, the big question about the Egyptology is whether or not they've been able to render the hieroglyphics into philosophical language. Mm. Mm. Right. Right. Because it's all thing-related. Oh. So someone must have done some good work. You know, I, that makes that reminds me of something. Which, speaking of hieroglyphics and language, I noticed when you know how the Greek language was originally just written solid, just there were no spaces, or that's how dreams are. When I do my dreams, it's like. One continual sentence. It's like, you know, the blah blah blah, and so therefore la la la, and it seemed like I'm, and I keep going and 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 and. Don't change it. It's like. Hey, don't thinking, change it. This is like how Greek language was written. There's no ending. There's no. Are you saying that both dreams and, uh, I think you actually did three dreams. Egyptian hieroglyphics and Greek language, all a single stream. Are you saying that what they all betray is... I don't know about the uh, Greek hieroglyphics, but I'm just saying that the way the... Are you saying that what they all, what both betray then is a, is a, uh, is that the, the form of communication itself betrays a unity of thought? Or a continual... Like a whole, a wholeness to... Kind of a whole... There might be parts, but there's a wholeness as well. Yeah, and maybe it's unified. Uh, Oh, thank you. And I remember when I was studying Greek with okay. David, he'd say that this was there's a certain all word. In one night. And it means Wait, end. We just use We're going to do a dream. Okay. So we just okay. use all set? Word. We just can't do cross Okay. What do you need? Uh, the pens are here. Yeah, oh. You probably could use a uh, clipboard if you've got one in the house or something to write on. A book. Here, a so this book. is all like one dream, but it's like one night. But it looks like it was broken up into three dreams. I don't know. Do you want to do them all or just a section of it? I have it like one, mm -hmm. two, and a three, and I already it's flipped to the back, but, oh, okay. okay, what is it here? 
I don't think there's a video. No oh, video, okay. but we still have audio running. Okay. But I, 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 I took a picture of it, so I'll read it. You want me to read it out loud? I'm just talking to you. Um, yeah. Yeah? Probably for our benefit, yes. <laughs> okay, let me know when you're ready here. I'm not the audio right now. It feels good. I, uh, my hand thinks so. I have, my tongue has yet to uh, test. You know what I really miss, though, Julie? Mm. Uh, hummus. No, your, oh, the hummus was last night. It was great, too. Mm. But your, uh, this place where you go to pick up the kolaches or whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. oh. With the egg and the mm. oh, bacon and spicy. Mm -hmm. Are these Costco or something? So, Seon has moved up close to the board, and Pierre is reading Seon's handwritten pages where he transcribed a dream he had, or maybe Boy, several dreams a few days ago. Oh, he's they are busy. Okay. Do you know how to get rid of goldfish? No. I'll call the gopher. They say that, but I'm just going to, I don't want to catch the other animals that go through here. That sound, that's like <laughs> fingernails on chalkboards for me. I didn't try that. Metal on concrete. Oh, they really need uh, feetsies, over. little rubber feetsies or something. Hmm. Avocado trees. So. Oh. Hmm. Good I like idea. That. I like that sound. Oh. I, I don't like chalk, the chalkboard, but that sound I don't like. Kind of gets it for you, doesn't it? It's a man of <laughs> construction sanding something. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Saying? Okay, I'll, I'll read it. Okay, so you're gonna read it. Metal okay. scraping on concrete. Okay, so this is from last weekend, and hmm. uh, but it's all from one evening. But the dream seems to be brief heart. When okay. did you have the dream? Sunday. Okay. Uh, okay, I was with my brother catching frogs and clams in the pond, and we would put them in a metal bowl. We also had our phone, and we decided to put them away because we didn't want them to fall in the water. I see these people I work with, and I was embarrassed because I didn't want them to see me doing this, picking the clam and stuff. People came back. The people came back and we were in this place, like a school or a retreat place. And I was wondering where they all played and slept and things like that. A director type person, uh, I think her name was Karen. I was trying to talk to her, um, but she couldn't really hear me uh, because the noise around, she kind of just gave up. Uh, I noticed in the background there's <coughs> and I thought that's where the noise is coming from. And then this seems like another dream. Sorry, Sam, say that again. I noticed in the background, what was the end of that? I noticed scene? in the background is like Los Angeles. Oh, LA. LA okay. yeah. And I thought that's where the noise came from. And so this is the same dream, the same night. It's a different dream. So I don't know if this is another dream. I was with Eldar and my brother. We were watching a play or a, or a movie. Um, was watching a skiing competition. The announcer said, well, his partner would have been here, but he was in an accident from doing these awesome skiing tricks. Three, three, 360 degrees, uh, he's going really fast, doing acrobatic and twisting, and there's nothing he could do wrong. And he lunges into something. I don't know if he was intentional or not. Uh, Eldar said, well, that was, uh, or Eldar was sad and crying, and he said, that was a shame. He said what? He, he said that was a shame that the person mm -hmm. hurt himself. He said, he said, that's a loss. 
sounds like a word that I'll die can use. <laughs> I don't know if he did it intentionally or what. Um, and then this is another dream that night. I, I think I was visiting with Eminem, the, the rapper. We were really good friends in the, in the countryside. It is snowing and the whole neighbor was crystallized, like from the snow melting, you know. The lights were neon. Uh, folks had dressed up and de decorated their home. And we go outside to check out his studio, driving around, leaving tracks on the snow um, on the way there. We get in his studio and I think all this space that he has, a person could really get develop something here. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Too. Oh, all, all the space that he, he has in his studio, I said, oh, a person could develop oh. and, and create something. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the space was like a crystal cathedral, it's really beautiful. Um, so traveling there was beautiful and inside was just gorgeous. It was just uh, like another world. What did you Um So the first two part of the dream was um, it just seemed like it just... Oh, I'm mean, sorry. The first part of the dream was kind of generic and I didn't really see anything in it. Picky clams and such with my brother and being a little embarrassed of maybe mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what we normally do. <laughs> um, but the, so the second part mm -hmm. where that skier was really awesome um, and somehow he found a way, found a way to hurt himself, to kind of, I guess to take himself out of a competition or something, but I don't really know why. That was the third one? That was the third. That was the second. That was the third one, the stand. Oh, no, no, that was the second. The third one was the crystallized, uh, the M&M one. That's down oh. here. Yeah, yes. okay. Oh. You got it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So, yeah, so I don't know why he, uh, I thought he was doing so well um, skiing and doing all these fancy flips and turns, mm -hmm. and then he okay. seemed to kind of crash in the end, and I kind of thought it was intentional. Mm -hmm. um, but the third one, it was just uh, a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was vibrant and it was like ready for growth or something when I was in the, in the studio visiting M&M. Mm -hmm. um, how are you, uh, how would you describe yourself, what are you doing through all of these in the um, dream? Like getting a picture of yourself, is there anything similar going on? Uh, yeah, I think I was seeing clearly on all of them, seeing a lot of what's happening in, in all of it, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, want to go back over the first, because uh, there's something that happened in there. Mm -hmm. um, Take a look. When I was... No, just read it again. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I was with my brother catching frogs and clams in the pond, and then we would put them in a metal bowl. We, we also had our phone and we put them away because we didn't want them to get in the water. I see these people I work with and I was embarrassed because I didn't want them to see me doing this. No, so that's what you left out. Say it again. I was... Embarrassed? Just, I, I didn't want them to see me. Yeah, they're going to see you, right? You're yeah. embarrassed that they were going to see you. Taking clams and stuff. Right? And that embarrassed you that they might see you yeah. doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're worrying about others. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what happens next in the next episode? In the next scene? Yeah. Uh, 
So remember all that noise that was going on? Yes. Yeah. So when I was talking with the woman, yeah. she was pretending to hear me after a while because yeah. she couldn't really hear yeah. me yeah. because of the noise. Yeah. And we kind of dropped this, like dropped what I was trying to communicate with her. No, see, you saw she was pretending. Uh huh. What did you do with what you were saying? What did I do with it? Yeah, did you say, hey, you're pretending, baby? I didn't say anything. Well, you let her get away with pretending. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Mm hmm. Hmm. How did Wait. she look when she was pretending? She kind of looked like like she didn't care after a while. Like kind of like. Yeah, yeah. I don't hear what you're saying anyway, so I'm just gonna nod my head and. <laughs> uh, what please. would you call she's doing with respect to you? What What would I call that? Uh, what What would I call her? Yeah, what she's doing to you. Oh. Um, well, I kind of felt like an idiot after that. Like, because she's treating you like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Excuse me. Yeah. Look, see? She didn't care about what you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is she treating you? Yeah, like, I, I felt like an idiot I, I, if I had to point out, oh, you, you can't hear me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't that, and that wasn't true. No, that's not true. Yeah, because the noise was occurred outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you let her get away with that. I did. What? I did. I do. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Do. Let. Her. I usually do. Yeah, <laughs> the third one. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. With the skiing. Want me to read it again? Remember? I was skiing. Oh, uh, oh, the skiing. Are there, are there four sections? Yeah, the, yeah. Go ahead. The skiing. What's oh. the issue? So. So he was doing really well skiing um, and doing all these twists and turns and then at the end we watched like he intentionally crashed himself or something to, and then to take himself yeah. out of the competition. I agree. Look here. Uh -huh. This is something you were seeing about the skier yes. and what you just said. Are you sharing that with the people around you? No. Oh, oh, how important is that? Are you seeing something they're not? Yes. Mm. yes. You're hiding your seeing. Mm -hmm. You're hiding your seeing. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Last one. Uh. Very important one. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see in it? I uh, so I see a lot of beauty in all throughout. Mm -hmm. And then when we finally get to his studio, mm -hmm. um, I had also had a lot of vision in there too. Yeah. But I didn't say anything. Um, th that's true. But something else you did. Is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what. It, uh, it, it was, I don't know, I said, this space is a person who could really develop something here. This space is like a crystallized cathedral. The, the travel there was beautiful and inside was gorgeous. going back a little bit. So we go we go outside to check out his studio, driving around, leaving tracks on the way there. We get into his studio and I think yeah. Yeah. all this space, a person yeah. could really develop something here. Yeah. Uh, read that's it again. That same thing? Oh, the whole thing? Yeah, no, 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 the last line. Okay. All this space, a person could really develop something here. Uh, no, no, read it again. 
see it when you read it. No. All this space, a person could really develop something here. Go ahead. Continue? Okay. This, the space was like a crystal cathedral. Yeah. The travel there was beautiful and inside was gorgeous. I don't see anything. Yeah, well, it's nothing there. That works. Yeah. Say, so, um, <laughs> a person could do something mm -hmm. in all that beauty. Uh, a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> oh. What? What? Oh, yeah, okay. What, what, what? Uh, a, a person could really develop something here. Yeah, it says someone. I wonder who that is. Yeah. <laughs> who are you leaving out? <laughs> yeah. Who? Somebody, I guess. Who? <laughs> Maybe me? Yeah. <laughs> Shaking hands. <laughs> Well, you're getting, maybe he'll do it. Maybe your, the rapper will do it. Yeah, I usually just kind of like let somebody yeah. else that's more Yeah, creative. yeah. Who are you leaving out? <laughs> Me. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, usually I let someone else who's more creative do it. But they don't. What was that? <laughs> What's that called? Uh, what is that called? Like, not projecting? No. Same letter. Someone who's more creative, more creative than you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Say your friend is a rapper. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about his creative ability? Uh, more than you. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. He, he, he sings. What, what? I think he sings and writes as a rapper. They sing. Oh, you think he'd do better than you? Mm. Drum roll, maestro. <laughs> well, maybe something, something else he can do better than me, but maybe... Maybe what? Uh, maybe other things that I'm better than him. Yeah, yeah. Especially on the creative side? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing with yourself? In the dream? Yeah. I'm kind of... Yeah. I'm, I'm like... I'm bottling up my talent. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. Now why don't you tell us what it's like being there in the middle of that crystallized cathedral and all that. Come on, what's it like? You saw um, that in that scene you could finish it. That, uh, that I could, I, I felt like when I was in there I could do anything. Oh, come on, you know, a little bit? No. How high? Come on. Three. Come on. What would that vision be like? Big red arrow, lower right, with a <laughs> red stick figure. It was really high, I think. It's the highest you've ever been. It was boundless. There's no barriers. Yeah, boundless. What was it like being there? Boundless opportunity. Mm -hmm. To be totally creative. Yeah, it was. Go ahead. And I just... And? All I needed to do was just take a step and do it. Yeah. But you know, you can do it. Yeah. You're there, but you're not doing it. What does that do to you? It, it makes me feel like time, that, time is wasting. And now it's time to work. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Right. It's time to work. How important is that for you? It's really important. Damn right. Now, do one more thing. Mm -hmm. Go back and tell me what that state is like again. <laughs> Come on, you got it. Put it in words. The last part? Um. <clears throat> that, 
um, what the state was like. I mm-hmm. really was standing there with him, and I had all these visions of things yeah. they could do. That you could do. You saw what you could be like, mm-hmm. a, what kind of person in the art world at that time. Uh, just anything, anything I wanted to do that I could do it. That's right. But you're avoiding my question, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> is, is there a direct question? If you could act on that vision of yourself and your ability at that moment in that surrounding, in that perfect place for creating, you would be then most fully finish it. Uh, the fully completed person, completed mm-hmm. artist. Yeah. Among, among, uh, among uh, the minders? Among them all. Among, among those in Brooklyn? Yes. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Among those in Los Angeles? No. San Francisco? <laughs> yeah, so I'll take Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what do you got to do? I'm starting what? to do it. Yes. yes. Start eating I, M&M's. I started doing it. Nice, Sam. Very nice. Good for you. Yay. Good. That's yours. You want to okay. keep it? Sure, yeah. Yes. Uh, just, if you just leave that there, we're going to take oh. pictures later. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and then we can take pictures the other one, too. Yeah. Tear it off later. Are you going to do art at the Orange County Theater? Skip. Yes. yes. So I noticed yeah. that when I was sitting here listening. What am I going to do? No, it's right. Oh, I was just thinking okay, about... Okay, Yeah. No, I just didn't know whether I should mention, say something. I, um, I don't often, but I thought I'd raise it. I noticed while I was sitting here listening, reading the Three Pillars of Zen and uh, that quote in the Justice and making distinctions between that and also Parmenides. It was just suddenly I just slipped into a deep trough, like, like, <laughs> where I went. But it was like somebody pulled the plug. Plug, like, what the hell have I been doing? Where have I been? I just felt like I needed to stop everything I'm doing. And I, but I don't know where to go uh, after I, that. <laughs> that's easy. You don't need to. I don't need to stop. Know everything. where you're going. Well, I sat there and said, hey, "Okay." Wait a minute. You don't need to know where you're going. Well, yeah, but I sat there and said, okay, Pierre says not knowing is a good state. So you're not you're in a state of not knowing what to do at this point. But it, it seemed like what I, I kept doing was, okay, well, you don't want to stay there because you got too many other obligations. But I kept going back thinking... Um, many other obligations? Well, I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to, I don't know what I wanted to be doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what I'm doing, or I don't think it's what I'm doing, but I don't know. It was just suddenly, that's where I went. (laughs) So it was like a trough of not really sure, not knowing Seeing that there was something, a goal I'd like to achieve, like completeness and perfection, and and, uh, a a certain state of mind that I'd like to be in, um, that justice state. But I, I just see that I'm not there, and I'm just not sure what to do. Oh, that's easy. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. (laughs) You don't need to. Uh, I don't need to know what to do. Yeah, ah, that's not easy. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. That's not easy. You want a plan. You want to yeah, be sure. That yeah. That's your problem. Dump it. <laughs> wait, Where wait, do you wait. dump it? I got hey, obligations. That's easy. Any garbage pan. Yeah, but I got <laughs> obligations. I got wait. things hey. I've got to do. Hey. Uh, what does that mean? Eh, eh, eh. You don't need to. You, you're, you're not going to act because you're, you're not sure of where you're going? 
and how to get there. That's absolutely correct. And, then, and you need that in this world, but you're not talking about this world. You're talking about creativity. Right, but I don't... <laughs> you don't need to know where you're going on the creative world. Wow, well, I love that. I don't... I, well, I'm not getting it. Pardon me. You are. <laughs> nope. I'm not. I don't need to know in the creative world. What the hell am I creating? <laughs> I'm not creating anything. Watch. Jeez. Okay. Hi. Uh, how you doing, sir? Right. Yeah, I'm turning so, to uh, In that dream, did you have to know what you were going to do in the cathedral? Did you have to have a layout, a plan? No. Um, no, I'm just going to do it. Whatever it is, it would work. A actually, this dream was on Sunday, um, and then yesterday I met with a person to do an art show, and I committed to it for July. But to answer your that? question, yeah, to answer your question, no, I, in the cathedral, I, I've already know what to do. Sure. It's just that I just need to, yeah. to take that step and do it. Yeah, but I don't know what to do. You don't need to know until you start doing it. Doing what? <laughs> I've been thinking I've been doing things. Wasn't wasn't one of the key words in one of the phrases that you were reading? I'm not sure if it was Balboa or... I, I know I'm interjecting with your talk with Pierre here for a second, but I just... Wasn't it spontaneity and appropriateness right no. in the moment without having to... I mean, that is the, the opposite of the issue that you're talking right now. The, the, the That's self what's... immediately knows what needs to be done. Yeah. Well, without, I'm not there. To, hmm? I said I'm not there. You're, you're describing, yeah, but I can see why that quote, if that's the problem you're having, I can see why that particular quote would pres would put you into this state because it's, it's what what, it, what that quote is describing is precisely. Um, well, I understand that. That's okay. why I'm here. What just happened? Well, he's giving me a lecture, and I'm going. No, 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 Excuse no. me, I don't need it. I'm here. I understand that. I understood that paragraph. What do I do in right now? Say, um, if I were to do right now. Say, hey, um, what do you think of uh, what you got goals? What kind? Of, um, you just finished the paper, is that right? Yeah, I had the thought of maybe writing an article from that paper on that particular um, subject matter. I thought it would be good to maybe present it to APPA. Oh. I thought it was a good one. Oh. Well, then you do know what you're doing. No. But, pardon me, you do have a goal. <laughs> That's just writing an article. Pardon me, don't use the word just. Yeah. What would happen if you did it? What would you have to say to yourself? Uh, what would change if you did it about yourself? Well, that I'm understanding more about philosophical midwifery. Is that important to you? Yeah. Oh, so then you do know what's important to you to do. <laughs> Is that right? Maybe? Well, that's one thing. What, what? That's one thing. I'd like to master the Parmenides. Oh, are you, uh, are you, <laughs> wait a minute, hey. <laughs> that's a joke. Hey, don't, hey, please don't laugh. How are you doing compared to where you were doing a year ago? <laughs> well, that's not a good Come question. Come on, how are you doing compared <laughs> to a year ago? I didn't hear you. Um, <laughs> seems like it's worse. I'm not getting, I'm not understanding it. As, you know, I don't know, it just seems like it's not, it's not become a, a scholarship game for me. Oh, That's is that, by the way, is that different? Yeah, I, I mean like, uh, pardon me, it's is like that what, what this quote says and what this part of the book says and I'm going, yeah, but I want to make it 
I want to I want to see this stuff. Not I want to kind of like what Parmenides is doing, being able to speak from himself and and from oneself. <laughs> I don't want to know whether this this is what he said in this hypothesis and I, I you know maybe that's good to know I don't know I mean I asked you would you compare the way you the working you were doing now with a year ago did you answer me or did I forget and you really no, did I, didn't. I, I think I'm making it more like I want to I want to be able to put myself into it not not just simply compare quotes and stuff Father. How's that compared with uh, two or three years ago? <laughs> how about two months ago? <laughs> Pardon? What, I said, what? how about two months ago? Uh, any way you want. What yeah. is it? Come on. Well, it's a different set of questions for myself. What does that mean? What does it mean? Well, uh, I don't know. It's like pardon. going into a direction I don't know what to do. Hey, do you <laughs> mind answering the question? Is it... Is it different? Yes, it's different. Oh, is it the minor difference? No, it's more meaningful. Oh, what's it like now doing and just going into something that is more meaningful for you personally? Unknown. Don't oh. know where to go. Like it's easy to be scholarship. Yeah, we're putting that aside and answering the question. Yeah. I don't know if it's that's the way you're supposed to go either. I don't know if that's. Of course the way. you don't know, but I didn't ask that. Yeah, you don't know whether it's going to justify itself, do you? Uh, no, I I have a sense that it will. It's just I don't think I will get deep. Oh, good. That's the other part. Good. You mean you have to deal with that self-doubt mm. and where it comes from. The self-image of... Um, that you're not going to be able to do it. Getting de deep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's surfacing that problem. Yeah. How yeah. important is that? Well, I, it's very important. Hmm. Is that the very problem you're saying? How can I go on unless I'm sure I'm going to be benefited? No, that's not quite it. Yeah, you do it for me. Uh, go ahead. No, I think it's... It's like... I see it's like comparing what I was doing last year to now and I see a difference, but I see that right now, yes, it's 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 improved, but it's not full. It's there's missing, and I wake up to the fact that wait a minute, here I'm thinking I'm doing good work when in fact I'm not. Pardon me. The kind of work Pardon I want to do. Pardon me. You're making the same problem emerge once again. Okay. What's that? You don't understand what understanding is. You're confusing it with knowledge. Well... Hey, why, why, why is that important? And why is it important? Oh. I don't know. Why is it Because understanding always admits of degrees. Oh, yeah, okay. And you're wiping out those distinctions. Those degrees? Are you learning to understand now in a better way than formerly? Well, understanding in the sense of not... But, I don't know what you mean by understanding. What uh, I mean is that I'm getting... I want to make it meaningful, personal to myself. Yeah, yeah. Is that different? That's different. Oh, is that worthwhile? Not, not just uh, pardon me, is being that able worthwhile? to quote it, from the text. Is that worthwhile? Yeah. Oh, oh then that difference makes a difference. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, yeah. What does that do to you to say yes? Right now? Um, it's 
good. It's good, but it's. <laughs> uh, go ahead, say but it. it's not. It's good. Because you still have the doubt. Yeah, but I, it's I, surfacing. Not doubt. Hey, it's, it's not surfacing. Doubt. It's surfacing. The world. It's surfacing the doubt. Doubt. Why do you say doubt? It's not my doubt. What am I doubting? I'm not sure what I'm doubting. Well, you just said it very well. I do remember. Otherwise, I'd be okay. foolishly. Okay. Do okay. Do you remember? No. Nope. <laughs> right, heavens. One of us has to remember. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> That's another thing I noticed. What is that? Uh, don't remember as well. Oh, oh, only important things Mostly. about yourself. That's all. <laughs> Apart from that, it's cool. What is a doubt? What doubt do I have? That you'll be able to understand it on a profound level. Oh, that's a better way to put it. Yes. Yeah, I like that. You like that. that way of putting it? Yeah, that's better for me. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I go steps. Yes. And do you know why it's uh, a pathologo? <laughs> because, why? There can never be data to support it. Hmm. Data to support. Therefore, it's hmm. a pathologist. To support that, I will. I have doubt about whether I can. Is it possible that having that doubt I about your own ability to proceed more profoundly, robbing you of a certain kind of energy to get into it more fully? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, when does the doubt occur? What when effect? all my obligations pop in. <laughs> that's that's right. Competition with other things you should be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a decision, don't you? That you're important. <sighs> Is that right? Well, I think I. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think mind. what I'm doing is important. But yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. not as. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Question. Pierre, are you still thinking? I was just wondering what the so the Tao and the the data to measure like the outcome that, that we fear you know, if we put energy in, into something and say if it say for example a book and it sells a lot or if it doesn't how do we measure that, and why do we believe those fears that prevent us from making the damn thing? <laughs> that's, I think that's really hard in the creative people, whether they're writing, writer or artist. And I, and I, and I do the same thing with this art show, because it's mm -hmm. showing in like a, a, a small place, it's not a real gallery, mm -hmm. but I have really good work that I'm going to put in there. And I have this fear about what people are going to think and say of me, <laughs> but I decide to do it now, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what's going to come of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you were successful in what you were doing, or what you're doing, if, um, how would your dad approach it and approach you? <laughs> how would my dad approach it? Yeah, yeah. Did, did you have one? I had one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't. He wouldn't approach me. He wouldn't approach me. What does that mean? Your victory would mean what? Uh, nothing to him. Nothing. That nothing. Nothing. There's nothing in my victories mean anything to him. Except maybe, uh, no, nothing. They don't, no, nothing. Nothing to him. It's all him. You yeah. know, what, what he thinks, what is important to him, and yeah. his world. In fact, all the, all the things that I have done, there's, there's remarkably nothing that he has ever said that I've done well at. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm. He can't do what then? 
he can't see anything that I'm really in, interested in. Yeah. Perhaps a, uh, is that in some way possible? Except maybe making cement for cement walls. Yeah, yeah <laughs> physical things. Yeah. Being a, yeah, a worker. Yeah, or catching fish off the pier. Right, right. I can do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. no, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, totally. So, so nothing. it doesn't affect your, uh, your willingness to engage in those mechanical kinds of things, because that's allowed. Yeah, that's allowed. Yeah. But for this other realm, is that allowed? It, it's like it's like being absent. He's not there. Yeah. I wonder whether that might have be related to the doubt you experience. Well, he doubts it. That it's possible. Yeah, he doubts it. Are you... Or that it even exists. Yeah. Or it's yeah. even real. Yeah. 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 Curious, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. What do you find interesting? He about? doesn't. I don't even think he gets to the level of doubt. Do it again? I don't know if he even gets to the level of doubt, but yeah, his, no, his no, absence. He, he doubts you. Doubts me. Yeah, he has a doubt. He, he doubt in the sense that he doesn't think I can do it. Yeah, that's yeah. that. If that's yeah. what doubt is, yeah, that's that doubt. Sounds yeah. like a yeah. doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Could that doubt he has been influencing you? Uh, yeah, that fits. Oh, yeah. Oh. So you got a, you're surfacing a very lovely problem. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. good. Can we yes. talk about the project? Sure. Okay. Oh, what project is that? Uh, I was nosy. I'm uh, uh, having to design this, if, if it's possible to do, teaching philosophical midwifery to the NS people who are interested. Oh, can I, can I be part of that project? What, what role would you like to play? What roles are there? Oh, first tell me. <laughs> Wait, are you saying, are you asking whether you can be a, a student or whether you can be part of building the project with Pierre and Barbara? You which, don't want to get involved question? in refining that question for her. Oh, I don't? You okay. don't. You really don't. <laughs> uh, whatever you were planning to do right now. <laughs> right, he asked her what role he wanted to, she so, wanted to play, you're asking, you're I, telling, giving yes. some options, I'm just saying, that's the very thing she's working on, sorry. No, I was just at, explaining my somewhat totalitarian attitude towards his quest, his, Gina, you asked her what role she wanted out. to play, and that's a good question, right? That's the question you asked me. That's right. Right? And so, um... She said, what roles are open? You said, no, you need to answer first. And he's saying, does that mean you want to be a student? And it's like, that shouldn't be there, you know? You Mark. think she needs help to figure out what role she's going to play? Oh, I see how you're interpreting it. That, that's not how I meant it. I'm not trying to help her. I'm trying to clarify for myself what her original question was before he even asked that. Well, I'm getting a direction no, I just want to understand where the, she's coming from, for my own clarity, that's it. When you're saying you're working out or developing something, that means it's in the beginning stages, a creative stage. So that's where I like to be. Well, uh I but I don't know if there's other place, other things afterwards. So yeah. it's not really a role. Uh, so. yeah. uh, if I were going to explain that now, I would now be putting in, into words what I want to talk to Barbara about. Yeah. And therefore, uh, I'll talk to you about it after. If, as long as I get the full story. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, sometimes he That's cuts. That's fair. Okay. Sometimes he oh. don't come home late either. <laughs> okay. And sometimes he summarizes. So, so thank you. Fun. 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 Fun, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Fun. Pleasure. Yes.